there have been times in the past when we have asked for volunteers and people have been reticent to do things on behalf of Bloom. And so we're so grateful that Willetta was so excited to get started today <laughs> as the liturgist that she jumped right to it. And we're already ahead now, and, um, but you, we probably won't be getting out any earlier, Willetta, no matter who you promised. Um, don't, don't be planning on that. I am happy to note that we have lit our candle as a symbol of Christ, the light of the world, in our midst, knowing how Jesus also, in the words that he shared with us and that we have through the Gospels, said that you are the light of the world. And so this is a center of focus, along with our flowers, as they are a symbol of uh, the, the life and love of Christ. We are thankful for this light, as it indicates that uh, we are gathered in the name of Jesus, who said, Wherever two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And so as we are gathered here, we are in the midst of Christ, and Christ is in our midst. I welcome you to Bloom. We are a congregation that actively seeks to do ministry, which means that when this light is extinguished at the end of our service, it does not mean that the uh, light goes out, but that actually we then carry the light out into the world as we are in ministry together. And so I offer that to you in our form of greetings. Blue in the Desert Ministries is a United Church of Christ and Reconciling Ministries congregation seeking to do our best to live up to the modern motto of the UCC, which says whoever you are and wherever you are on the journey of faith, you are welcome here. And we know that we come from a wide variety of backgrounds and perspectives and a wide variety of even experiences already this morning. And we are gathered here together in this one place. We know that we are people who love one another in, in various ways. We welcome people who are straight and gay and bisexual. We know that we are people who, who represent the great diversity of God's creation and we are black and white and red and yellow and brown and we welcome one another. We know that identities in God's creation are not on a binary scale, but actually a continuum of understanding and perception and self-identity. and self uh, identity. And so we welcome people who are transgender, people who are cisgender, people who are gender non, uh, non-declaring, uh, non-binary, people who are intersex. It is our desire to welcome people as you see yourself from the inside out, rather than an identity that we would foist upon you. So now is the time for us to transition into our worship. We have been scattered uh, from distances and in minds uh, and, and uh, just in, in relationships at times, and now it's time for us to gather. We gather together in this place as people have done for worship for many, many, many years. We bring our heart and soul and mind and strength to this place for the worship of God and for the care of one another. Dennis. We are called to live a walk of trust and invited to walk the way of justice. We gather to worship because we trust God is good. We disperse layers to live trusting God's love and direction of our journeys. We pray to engage with God's spirit and sense the good that God is doing. We will share with others from the knowledge we are given, transforming our lives into an expression of God's goodness. Shalom, 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 peace, amen. This is the time in our worship when in faith we open our hearts to ministry with our prayer for good and growth. Let us pray this heartfelt prayer aware of its purpose for transformation. Grace God, the eternal source of spirit and creation, to the ministry of Jesus, you encourage us to live together in common mind and purpose. Even when our minds and hearts are drawn to separation and division, your call for mutual justice and compassion hopes to prevail. We pray for the wisdom and strength to help us put aside dangerous rivalries. We reach into ourselves for sources of love and memories of the benevolent community to empower us to be doers who are good. Help us remember that we are all the body of Christ and the life in the world. Teach us to trust your promises and embrace us in spirit as we embrace one another in love. We want to share your love and we need your energy to 
so. We pray in the name of all that is good and fair. Amen. Loving Creator of all, wonderful counselor for everyone, sovereign of peace, receive now our sincere and silent prayers. To all of our silent prayers, let the people say, Amen. 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 Receive now these words of encouragement. God, who is our rock and our salvation, promises and delivers strength for our journeys of trust and discipleship. Amen. Amen. Let us now receive the word. The Hebrew scripture reading for today is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, a select portion of those being verses 7 and 8. Blessed are those who put their trust in God, with God for their hope. They are like a tree planted by the river that thrusts its root toward the stream. When the heat comes, it feels no heat, its leaves stay green. It is untroubled in a year of drought and never ceases to bear fruit. Here ends the Hebrew scripture reading. When I was young and in high school, there was a song by Sting called, I Hope the Russians Love Their Children Too. And so it is that the Russians are in our news again. When Rev. Kevin and I get together to plan music. We try to be intentional about what's going on in the world. And so today, we present a Russian Alleluia. Salvation is made in the midst of the earth, O oh God. Alleluia.
please rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The gospel scripture reading for today is from the book of Luke, chapter 6, a select portion of those being verses 20 through 23. Looking at the disciples, Jesus said, You who are poor are blessed, for the reign of God is yours. You are hungry, you who are hungry are now blessed, for you'll be filled. You who weep now are blessed, for you will laugh. You are blessed when people hate you, when they scorn and insult you and spurn your name as evil because of the Chosen One. On the day they do so, rejoice and be glad. Your reward will be great in heaven, for their ancestors treated the prophets the same way. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. God. Amen. Blessed are those who put their trust in God, with God, for their hope. Let us pray. Loving, wonderful God, we are thankful for this time to be together. We're blessed by this marvelous music from around the world. We're thankful for the talents that are here. We know that this is a special and unique moment that will never happen again exactly this way. And we are thankful that we are able to participate in it as we are gathered here today, being your body in this place as we are ministers of Jesus in the world. Continue, loving God, to anoint us by the presence of your spirit. We know you are here among us. We are thankful for the way in which you touch each of us in some way, in the way in which through the words, through the music, through our thoughts, our prayers, through the, just the notes of the music, that somehow you are able to touch our hearts and our minds and enable us to be the people you hope we will be. Continue to bless us in this service together as we pray, as the psalmist prayed so many years ago, that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth will be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Perhaps you notice the way that the words are printed in the bulletin today. Some of the words are bigger than others. In the office this week, administrative assistant Rick and I pondered them for a while. Well, actually, I pondered while Rick did his usual good job of trying to get me to hurry up and make a decision. <laughs> In my pondering, I was considering how the negative surrounds the positive. In these words, because we are not a Bible carrying church, if we only printed the positive message of this passage in the bulletin, we would miss its surrounding layers. Many human beings have a tendency to react more strongly and even give preferential treatment to negative stimulus. Today, the positive message, which is the core focus of our faith, could easily be overlooked by human nature and human tendency. I hope we learn to recognize and counteract that tendency. Let's look for the good stuff. Today's gospel passage is called the Sermon on the Plain. It is similar to the Sermon on the Mount that so many of us are familiar with. Anybody heard of the Sermon on the Mount? There you have it. But the Sermon on the Plain is different. And some people find it hard to keep track of which one comes from where. The Sermon on the Mount and the Sermon on the Plain have different names because in their stories, they are set in different geography. On a mount and on a plain. Now one little trick to remember what Gospels these two sermons that of Jesus are found in is to remember that Matthew 
had the sermon on the mount. Remember how on Epiphany Sunday I reminded us that the story of the Magi is from Matthew. So in these cases, M's are pivotal for memory. The Sermon on the Plain is found in the Gospel of Luke. I got nothing to help you remember that. <laughs> Other than it's not in Matthew. What makes the Sermon on the Plain different from the Sermon on the Mount are the woes that the writer of Luke includes. As Luke assembled his sayings attributed to Jesus almost 40 years after Jesus would have said them, he started out with assuring promises that motivational coaches today would call carrots. Then Luke got the stick out. Woe to you. Woe to you. Woe to you. Woe to you. Four times he woed, but four times he blessed first. What I want to say to Luke today is forget about woeing people. <laughs> Concentrate on doing what you can to bless them. Likewise, forget about woeing yourself. Yourself. Concentrate on doing what you can to bless yourself. While I understand the nature and the context of the woe topics and have even preached on them in the past, have used them in community organizing uh, situations, especially situations where we were working on worker rights and uh, pointing out the woes of corporations that take advantage of people in their policies and pay scales, I think uh, that one of them speaks... I and I think that one of them speaks to what I am going to be saying next. Today, I say this because there are enough woes swirling around. We do not need any more woes. There are enough woes swirling around us that we do not need anything or to do anything to generate more. At the same time, I recognize in myself and social situations that, as I said earlier, human nature and developmental socialization can have many of us more prone to react to woes with woes than to and with blessings. I think that's something we can work on in our faith and our life developments. And the first step is to know what we want to do. We do not have to read or watch the news to hear too many or hear too many personal stories to know that our days are filled with reports of tension and sadness. Back in the old days of my high school memorial, Eau Claire Memorial High School American History class, on a timeline of America's growth experience, I remember the teacher plotting something, a section of American history called the Era of Good Feeling. I am sure I do not have to tell you that we are not living through one of those now. <laughs> Given the technical and progressive social developments that we have experienced in the past few decades, I seldom wish for the good old days. But a good old-fashioned era of good feeling would be mighty nice sometime soon. Students and teachers of history are able to point out that we are not living in the worst of times. What's going on is that we are in the midst of a negative storm, which is causing damage. However, when we rise with the power and logic, with the power of logic and energy that is integral to our divine relationship, the negatives do not have the power in themselves to wipe us out. I trust that we human Americans have the strength and will to hold on to what is positive. Religious scholars will remind us that it is a heresy to say that we are divine or that God is contained in us. God is uncontainable. 
Yet we are connected and interconnected with a creative energy that imparts to us the power to do good when we want to. Call it Holy Spirit, if you like. I think that creative energy is what we Christians call Emmanuel, God with us. And I trust that, cre that creative spirit to help us not lose hope and do what we can to do the right thing. As I wrote, in a as I wrote to a commiserating colleague on Facebook last week, the historical political situation we are now living through appears to me as an age within an era. The era is the multiple decade manifestation of reaction to the 1960s civil rights movement and the war on poverty. Strategies established decades ago by an alliance of business, political, and judicial leaders have eroded the social and constitutional values of common welfare so much that commitments to public good and community benevolence are lost to adoration of profit, which manifests itself in massive personal wealth accumulation. The age could be called Trumpian, and it will be plotted on timelines of future high school history teachers in some states and counties as being recognized by the evidence of gilded aspirational claims, fear-mongering, profiteering greed, legal manipulations, unbridled fury, gaslighting, and angry chaotic rhetoric. In the now, this In the now, this national experience is wearing many people down. It is reported that many people are feeling outraged and tired. In Psychology Today, at the close of 2018, a licensed creative artist therapist and board certified music therapist, appropriate for choir day. His name is Dean Ulsher, and he wrote, outrage fatigue is a specific form of learned helplessness. When people are subjected to terrible things over which they have no control, they give up trying, even when they eventually face challenges that they can control. Learned helplessness leads to depression. In the realm we live, the positive is being surrounded by the negative. And the message of faith today that we find is the positive. Blessed, 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 blessed. Now I'm not trying to be Pollyanna or some kind of self-help guru. I am just hoping to help us get through this era using a few of the skills our active minds and faithful hearts can use to get and stay well. The therapist goes on to write, the cure is simple. Take action. Do anything, no matter how small. Even the tiniest act can make a difference to your personal well-being. And so I say, take deeper breaths more often. A few deep breaths will help in moments of anxiety. They'll help our bodies pass off the negative energy. Take a walk. Turn the radio in your car to the comedy channel. And be forewarned that it can get pretty ribald at any time during the day. <coughs> Watch old movies. Have a coffee chat with someone. Take a drive with the radio set to the classical channel. Put down your phone unless you are taking a photo of a sunrise. Take another walk. Do a crossword puzzle. Go to a resistance march. Serve lunch to the homeless and the working poor. Sing in a choir. Play cards. Take some more deep breaths. When first century people were trying to get rid of tension in the Greek city Philippi, our original church consultant, the Apostle Paul, as we know him, wrote to the congregation there one of the undisputed letters of Paul. 
wrote to the congregation there and said, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true. Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things and the God of peace will be with you. That's the kind of pondering we are all encouraged to do. We have in our faith and in ourselves the encouragement and the power to sort through the negative to find the positive. From the downpour of anxieties that are falling all around us these days, we can come in to the sun with some personal effort and the support of our connected communities, we, live through, we will live through this era to find that better times are ours to be made and to be had. I am happy to report that this is how the God of our faith means for us to find fulfillment in life. And thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. and join together in singing our dog. Given to us from Jesus using the words most familiar and comforting to you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, 